Right, hello there. Everything looks to be up and running, so let's just jump into it. Um, welcome to iView Create Tween. I'm going to make a cooking pot, a witch's cooking pot today. We'll make this as an accessory, but we might be able to do some poses. So if we get time, we'll drop in a couple of poses. So. As this is an accessory, we need to use the accessory starter file. So I've got all the starter files on my desktop. As always, let's just drop in the starter file link. Starter files. So you'll want for this whoops the starter files. So you want the accessory starter file for this. And it can be the male or female, there are two, but it doesn't matter. So where is that? As you can see there's quite a lot. There we go, female accessory starter file, so drag and drop and just open. So if you've not seen it before, this is the accessory file. Each one of these skeletons or armatures represents a bone of the avatar. So we won't necessarily be using these, although we might use this one at the bottom. That's female O3 master root, which is where the avatar stands whenever it appears in IMVU. So we just need to do something before we start. So viewport overlays. We want to change the scale to 100. That matches IMVU and we probably no, we can do without doing that. But if we needed to change, so as you move out, the avatar starts to disappear because there's a clip plane. So for large projects, you can adjust that from the sidebar. So click on that and then in view, you've got view end or clip camera clip end and clip start and those are all those are okay 2501 meter that's fine so close that right so let's make a pot what we want to do here then is best way of doing this add mesh uv sphere so that drops a sphere in at the feet of the avatar because that is where the 3D cursor is. And we've got this little pop-up that we can expand and get some of the options. So let's just enable wireframes so we can see. So we don't want that many subdivisions. So let's just reduce that. Maybe down to 18. Now let's go back up to 20. We don't need as many rings. So the segments are the vertical and the rings are the horizontal. Whoops, that's increasing, then we want to decrease. That's not enough. That should be okay, so 10. Right, edit mode. So that's the interaction mode selector, or 
editing context, as it used to be called, edit mode. So we can now start editing our pot. So we can either make this big Yeah, we can either make this big and do some poses with the avatar inside the pot, or we can make it small and handheld and do some poses with a handheld pot. Let's do a handheld pot. Okay, so let's just move it to one side or using our outliner, just hide the skeletons. Makes the view less busy. And let's make this a little bit bigger. So scale. That'll do. So click anywhere on the white loop or inside it to scale uniformly, but not on the widget handles because those scale in a particular direction. Like so. So if you click on the hand at uh, the white um, loop. It does it uniformly. So let's enable wireframe so we can see. Right, you want to get rid of this top section. So edit mode, face select, and what we can do is a loop select. So alt click and then shift alt click and then shift click to select these bits that we're going to remove. So alt clicking, if you have your right mouse button set up, that selects the loops. Shift alt click selects multiple loops and then just shift on its own whilst we've already got these loop selected just adds more selections to the group so that's what we end up with so we can get rid of that so we can either delete it outright or we can keep this uh, where is it? Mesh, separate, selection. What that does is it creates a new object from the parts that we've just selected. So what we might be able to do with this is make a lid. All right, so what do we want to do with this? So all self-respecting pots have a lip. So loop cut. Add one. Oh, there is something that we have to keep in mind when we use the starter files. So let me just save this. Save as.
Right, save. Yeah. So there's something we need to keep in mind when we use the accessory files. In order for them to be compatible with the various versions of Blender 2.8 and above that are available, they were originally created in Blender 2.8. And that means that when we import, well, when we open, import, drop in, however you open one of these starter files into a later version of Blender, it keeps most of the settings for the interface. So when we had the, is it still active? When we had the loop cut tool active and we get the little widget that appears or the little highlighter, when the tool is actually active, there should be a set of options at the top here. But in earlier versions of Blender, that was not available. So what we have to do is essentially reset the file. Open the file. So open. So where is it? Which is pot? So that's the pot. But we select it, but before we actually import it, what we need to do is click on this cog and disable load UI. So that's load user interface. So that's the setting that disables. So where's the file gone? Oh, there it is. So if we open the file now, we'll have to reset the view. So viewport displays or viewport overlays. So that's that button. And we need to reset the scale. So click 100. That changes the grid scale. And then we want view sidebar. So we've now got this new panel that indicates that we've reset the project basically so we want to actually be in the view tab so we can reset end to 2500 and clip start to one close that switch to material preview So now let's do this. So if we have the, so now with loop cut tool active, we've now got the loop cut tools at the top. So we can set the number of cuts that are made. We didn't need to do that, but that just highlights the, the difference between with, even within Blender 2.8 series. So we're now at this is Blender 2.83, long-term support, LTS. Uh, and it'll be the same for Blender 2.90 as well. That there's been enough of a change that some of the features and functions that were available with 2.80 have been swapped around, changed, or have been made obsolete. So when you import the starter files into Blender, the newer versions will get all of these problems that might mean we have to reset the project. So that's how you do that. So whenever you open a file, click on the cog in the corner and disable load UI. A bit of a faff, but it means that um, you're using the project file properly but the files are not backward compatible. So if we made them for 2.83 and 2.90, they wouldn't be, uh, they wouldn't work properly in 2.80 and above. So, right, so that's that. So with that out of the way, let's loop cut, not loop cut, uh, loop select. Let's just hide the top for the moment. Let's double click that to rename it. So we're using the outliner, whoops. Double click. 
part tart. Double click pot bottom. Right, so scale that outwards. So we're just making a very simple accessory item. Manipulator widget. That'll do. We could make this thicker. So the best way to do this, because we want to create the illusion of thickness without necessarily actually making the object thick. So what we can do is add another loop cut. Loop cut tool. Click, drag. So if we click, drag the tool, it'll allow us to slide it. Let's just undo that. But if we just click, it'll automatically, automatically center the loop along the edges that are being subdivided by the cut. Do that. Do it again. Click slide. Loop select. Drag that down. And then to make this look thicker, what we can do is extrude that. Or let's just drop that down a bit further. Add another loop cut. Toggle back to the manipulator. Scale. Loop select and scale that inwards. Not so far that it goes inside the pot. We want to avoid that. So hold the shift key down and this will slow the scale movement down. And we just want to tuck it underneath. Doesn't matter if there's a gap there because that won't be seen. But we're basically tucking that underneath the top to make it look like the pot's thick. It has some substance without necessarily extruding the inside of the pot and making it whatever thickness the pot needs to be. So let's just scale that in a little bit. That way we can play around with the thickness of the pot just by literally changing this loop that's selected. We don't necessarily need to do anything else. Now that's another little trick that you want to watch out for that you can use. to shape your meshes, whoops, rotate, without creating crazy, crazy amounts of detail. So that now looks like it's a relatively thick pot. Scale that inwards. So all you then need to do is, if you want to change it, and just play around with those two loops, like so. Whoops.
a, that's a quick and easy little trick. So let's add let's add a couple of handles, very simple handles. So face select. Let's use inset. So that's this one. So we've got the little handle widget appearing. So click that. Just drag inwards. Then we can use scale. So we want to scale this in a particular way. So at the moment we've got our orientation set to global. So the widget is orientated relative to the scene. And the surface isn't. So if we scale this now, it'll make the selection that we have deform. So what we want to do is change the orientation of the widget. So click on global, use local. No, that's not going to work or normal. That's usually the one that will do it with these odd selections. And we can see that the widget has now aligned itself to the selection. instead of the global axes. So we can now click grab scale and we can also click grab and move and that'll move that along the orientation of the selection. So let's uh, simple handle the best way of doing this. Try to think of, let's do edge select. So let's try that doesn't look right. And do that. So if we do all three. That looks all right. Let's grab these outer two. Whoops. So shift click. We'll just scale those inwards. vertices. So now we want to switch back to global. Or so what we're doing is just basically Playing around with the shape to get something that's going to look like a handle for the pot. And do and do and do. I think that's probably best. Let's try. That looks odd. So undo all of that. So that initial shape looks the best. So we want to do the same on the other side. 
I wonder. Let's try. So select a vertex, double tap the G key, and it'll slide the edge. Or we can use, I think it's that one, yes. So click hold and we'll get the fly out. Edge slide or vertex slide. And this does the same thing as the shortcut key, double tap. But it allows us to change the shape of the mesh a little bit. Yeah, that looks a little odd as well. So undo those. We'll leave it like that for now. So to get that shape on the other side of the mesh, what we can do is we could try and recreate it but a simpler solution is to view viewpoint front switch to wireframe make sure nothing is selected then what we can do is use the selection box click drag to the midpoint mesh we can either again delete or use separate that just creates an object from the selection that we can just keep as a reference so either or it doesn't really matter but you will have to toggle out of edit mode to hide that uh, to interact with it I should say so that's our pot what we can do here modifiers We can add a mirror modifier. And it automatically generates a copy of what we had. And it'll join it down the centres as well. So, so long as you make the selection and make sure that you're selecting the centre point where are we? Viewpoint front. So long as you make sure that your selection is down this center line, or if we were in another view, top. So we've got two center lines basically that one and that one. And we use the different axes to mirror the different sections so you could mirror a quarter of this and do it so if this was your original so one two three so that's a basic crock pot so what we want to do for this next is maybe add a leg or two or three Oh, let's save this before we do that. File, save as number two. And let's make a leg. Where's the cursor gone? Oh, it's all the way up there. So if we were to add a new object into the scene now, it would appear where the cursor is. And the cursor happens to be all the way over here. So we need to reposition it. So view sidebar. And we should have again in the, because we, this was the last tab that we interacted with. So in the view tab, we have the 3D cursor section. So click zero, click zero whoops click zero and the cursor has moved from over here to down here so now let's hide that sidebar we can add an object let's just hide the pot so we can see this 
and we'll add a cube. Because all we need is a simple leg, a leg shape or foot shape. It's a rather large cube, so just shove that. Whoops, that's the foot. To one side. So let's do Let's try doing a curly foot. So that's our object. Edit mode. Hum, so. We could do this a couple of ways, but let's try doing something that uses the extrude tool because we haven't used that yet. So we want to be in view, viewpoint, front. All we're going to do is use the extrude tool and just extrude this bottom face. We're going to extrude it down and then twist it, extrude it down and then twist it, and then maybe extrude it down and then twist it again. So we end up with this, what should be a curly shape like that. And then what we can do is uh, change the scaling of, on these loops or these faces as we go around. So extrude tool, click drag, because we want to do it straight down the plus. Hold control to snap to the grid if we want to. Let's just rotate that. Let's rotate widget. Whoops, wrong one. So we want to. This is one of the problems with the widgets. You have to be precise with where you click. So make sure that the colored loop highlights when you move the mouse over it before you click and try and rotate. Otherwise, you'll do something unexpected which can be a thing of itself, but let's use the universal for this because we're going to do a combination of moving and rotating at the same time. So that's the universal. So let's extrude again. Universal tool. Whoops. And then once more, extrude. Universal tool. So what we want to do then is mess around with the vertexes or the edges. View. Oh, perspective also. What we're going to do is just grab these edges and just play around with them so that we get a curly shape. So let's local, no, normal, yes. So that's all we're going to do. Sometimes the normal doesn't do what you might expect it to because even though it's using the normal, which is the orientation of the selection, the orientation of that, in this case, which is pointing perpendicular, so it's an average, essentially. So it's pointing out perpendicular from these two edges. So if you wanted to actually move this edge that we've got selected, but you wanted it aligned to this uh, plane, 
can't use normal. I don't think we can actually do that. No, we can't do that. So it's just a, a question of uh, guesstimating. We might have to toggle back and forth between the different modes. So that's square at the top. No, it's not, not anymore. So those two edges, scale those out. These two edges, scale those in. So we want to scale those together, but along that plane, so normal. Select this edge loop, scale. So we want to scale this uniformly. So again, we're cl uh, clicking the white loop anywhere inside that. And obviously that changes the position, which will then correct. So let's try playing with the shapes a little bit. So what we're going to do is just, yeah, that looks about right. So what we're doing is just playing with the shapes. In preparation of this being linked with or positioned somewhere here. Obviously, it's a massive thing at the moment, so we'll just need to rescale it down in object mode. So that's that's the shape of the foot. Let's narrow this at the top. We'll do that the other way around, so undo. And it looks better the other way, so undo all of that. make that a bit thinner. So it splays out. So there is something that we do need to watch out for. I don't know how easy this is to see, but if we look carefully as we're looking down on the top of this object, we can see there's a little bit of a face poking out there on this side, but there isn't on this side. And that's because the 
uh, Blender has generated this face in a different way to the face on the other side. So it's concave on this side. So there's an edge that's orientated relative to the two triangles that make this chord or this face. It's orientated this way, but on the other side, it's orientated the opposite way. So that's the face, but the edge is orientated this way. On the other side, it's this way. So we want to fix that. So they're both the same. So face select, select the face. And then what we can do here is, uh, where is it? Face, triangulate faces. And that shows us the edge. If we do the same on the other side, this might automatically correct itself, but face, triangulate, yes, and it has. So what it was actually doing was this, uh, is it edge? That's what it was doing. So we can see the difference. That produces a concave shape. That produces a con, no, that's concave. That's concave. The other one is convex. So that's convex. That's concave, which is what we want. And it might do the same for the front face, depending on how this is warped. So that's something that you need to watch out for when you're making your shapes. But that is our foot. And what we want to do is viewport, front, Shrink this down, so back into object mode, scale. That's about right. Let's move the pot upwards. And put our leg in place. Scale it down again. So we want it there. So what we need to do is just make some adjustments. So that's our foot, so that's just the one. So what we might be able to do So the pot doesn't have any contents. So just thinking.
so we can actually push that inside the pot so it intersects with the pot and then what we can do is just add a layer to this so that there is something hiding the fact that A we've got the arms and B we've got the leg poking through. So if yeah so what we can do is select the pot, edit mode We're in. Why is it not selecting the edge? Oh, that's why. Oh, we're in mirrored, aren't we? So, uh, select those edges. No, not those edges. Those edges. And what we can do is fill. No, oh, Dagnabate doesn't do it that way. Okay, so we have to do it the hard way. So those are our edges selected. We want to create a face across here. So we're going to have to do it the hard way. So select the loop. Mesh, separate, selection. Exit, edit mode, object mode, select the loop, edit mode into the loop. So that's our loop. So what we're going to do now is manually select and then we should be able to, where's the F key? No, it's vertexes now. It used to be the F key. Face and then you would f make a face, you could create a face, but it's now under vertex. So a new face from vertices, and this is what we want to do. Whoops. And because we've still got the mirror modifier in place, so press the F key, F key, F key, and then F key. So we've got a top. So now we've hidden all this grungy stuff that we don't want to see. So we've got the handle insert and then we've got the foot intersecting. Right, so object mode. Let's duplicate the foot. So what we want to do for that is reset the orientation, uh, the not orientation, the position of the cursor again. We need that at the center of the grid. View the sidebar. Zero. 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 That's what we're going to do. Change the pivot point. 3D cursor. So the widget moves to the location of the 3D cursor and then what we'll do is we'll do a linked duplicate. So object duplicate linked. What this does is it creates another instance of our object but what we can do is rotate it, hold control down, snap to the grid, Select the original. One eighty. Object linked duplicate. Release. Control. Snap to the grid. So we've now got four feet. And using link duplicate, let's hide that for the moment. And that. So that's the original. 
I want to get rid of this face because it's not it's not seen. So because these are all linked. Edit mode. Face select. Select. And it's selecting the same face on all the instances. And we can just delete that. And it'll delete them from all of them. So that's four feet. So let's call that proc. Hot croc. Pot bottom. Where are the feet? Oh, there are the feet. Hot feet. One. So that is we're almost almost done. So what we want to do next is object shade smooth. We want to do this for all the objects and it should do the same for all the feet. And then what we want is to mark seams, not seams, sharp so that we can sharpen up some of the shapes. So if we watch Come on, why is it not selecting those? Oh, we're selecting the wrong side. That's the only problem with using the mirror modifier is that you can select the object to tab into edit mode to edit the object but you can't select anything so that is one downside to using the modifier as opposed to doing it manually edge mark sharp that'll go blue because what we can then do modifiers again we want edge split And that automatically splits edges based on an angle value. So this is the edge split modifier. So we actually just want sharp edges. So we have control over what's being made sharp and what isn't. So sharp is just a hard edge as opposed to a soft edge. So if we disable that, we can see that we've still kept the hard edges around this selection but everywhere else has gone all soft and mushy so hard edge around the lip and everything else is okay we want to do the same for the foot or the feet So let's do that and we can see it's selected on the others. Edge mark sharp. So because these are separate objects we have to assign a separate instance of the edge split modifier but it does the same thing. So 
So let's add one down there as well. But, ironically, that where some of the modifiers will carry themselves over to some objects, it won't necessarily do it to all the objects. But, it does copy some of the properties. So, our instances have carried across H sharp markings that we've assigned, but not the modifier. Let's just turn the wireframe on for these so we can see what we're looking at. So that's our pot almost done. Let's have a take a look at the lid. Where's the lid? So make that wider. So we'll have to change the pivot point, which is down at the cursor at the moment change that back to its default which is median point and then we can scale loop cut click slide scale and again we can do the same thing we did before with the with the lip we can create the impression of thickness without necessarily doing too much And we want to add a little uh, uh, bobble on the top there. So, vertex, select that vertex. And what we can do here is, where is it? Snap, cursor to selected. So the cursor has jumped from the center to the selected object, which is that vertex that we had selected. And what we'll do here, exit edit mode, object mode. Oh, we need to uh, enable, I'll oh, we'll do that in a minute. So add mesh UV sphere. Obviously this is the little handle that you grab onto. So it doesn't need to be this big, it doesn't need to be this detailed. So let's reduce that right down. Six. Hmm. Let's do six and six. Scale. Let's get rid of these legs for the moment. We can get rid of this 
bottom set of faces. Don't need these. So you might find, so that's a separate object from the top. So the top is an object, the bauble is an object. You might find it easier when you are building up your projects. So just keep everything as a separate object. It doesn't have to be joined together to start with. And it just means it's easier to manipulate everything when you are dealing with just separate elements for your item that you're making. So what we need to do next is object, shade smooth, object, shade smooth. So for the top, we can probably loop select, edge, mark sharp. So we have to add our sharp modifier. Let's add a little bit of shape to the top. So again, we don't need to join everything yet, whoops, because what we'll actually do is we'll do all of that in the next stream. So that's our cooking pot for the time being. So we started out with the sphere, we reduced its complexity. So from 32 sides down to, I think it was about 20. Added a cube to create the feet. Made linked duplicates of those, and that'll come in handy later on. We cut the top off the sphere. Made our top. Added a sphere for the uh, handle at the top. And then we've added a plane that is the crock that's inside the pot. So let's just save this file, save as. And we should call it quits there for the next stream where we'll start looking at UV mapping. At, well, materials first. We'll start looking at UV, uh, material assignments, joining all the bits together, and then UV unwrapping this, which is an unusual shape so it can be quite tricky to unwrap things like this but that's what we'll do in the next one we'll look at unwrapping so thanks for lurking lurkers thanks for watching and do the usual subscription follow sub stuff depending on whatever platform you're watching this on and uh, we shall see you on the next one where we add materials and then wrap. So bye for now everyone.